Oh, don't you dare be sour. Clap for your world famous champion series and feel the power. It's a new day. Yes, it is. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to West Coast Pop. It is your boy, the final boss. And in today's entry, we have the big, meaty man himself, Biggie. And every single championship accomplishment he has won in the WWE. So for today's episode, you can bump your five-star classics. We don't care about no work rate, your mood salts, your 60-minute Iron Man draws. I don't want to hear none of it. Today's episode is about big, meaty men slapping meat. So whether you start your morning by chomping on some bootios or you got hit in the head with a pancake, we're going to spread some positivity. We're going to talk about Big E's accomplishments because he had to work his ass off for these accomplishments. He's had to go through adversity and obstacles. But these and but are not an anchor. They are not a burden. They don't hold me down. They lift me up. He's spitting and right although now. Although I may not know where this run is going to take me, I can assure you that I will give this nothing less than all of me. I said all of me because Dude, Day Rock. What else? Dude, Day Rock. Yeah. Yeah, Kayla. Kayla, I said yeah. Yeah. Let's kick off the list. First one on the list, we have Big E, Langston, and FCW winning the FCW Tag Team Championships in May of 2011 with his tag partner Calvin Reigns. Big E and Calvin Reigns ended a reign of a former Roman Reigns tag team partner Seth Rollins and his boy Richie Steamboat. That's a whole lot of rain and you can't stop the rain, but this is about Big E Langston, the muscle man himself going to town in FCW, making a name for himself. This man really shined in FCW. He stood out. I know he said bump the work rate, but this is where he really developed himself and his work in the ring to become the future main eventer. This is also where he developed his big ending finisher that he would use to win championships and defeat a whole lot of legends. Next up on the list, we head over to the land of NXT, where Big E Langston became the master of the five, the five, the five count. This man was such a beast that it didn't matter if you counted to three, you counted to five, or you counted to ten. Once he hit the big ending, you were laid flat looking at the stars. It was curtains. And in December 2012, the newly established Shield had Seth Rollins, the first ever NXT champions, back. But that wasn't enough to stop Big E from running through and taking gold. And how apropos that the second entry on this list, Big E becomes the second NXT champion, defeating Seth Rollins for the second time for a championship. Talk about having somebody's number. Not to mention, before he even got to this title fight against Seth Rollins and basically the Shield and no DQ, Vicky Guerrero put out a bounty on his head that he had to fight off. But that would not stop your boy from getting his big ending, that championship gold. Let us know in the chat which NXT version you like the most, whether it's the early days, the black and gold, or the current white and gold. Next up on the list, we have Big E debuting in the main roster as a heel, aligning with Dolph Ziggler and AJ Lee. He would go on to have a match at WrestleMania his first year there, tagging with Dolph Ziggler for the Tag Team Championships. He even would have a brutal, bloody United States Championship match against Dean Ambrose at the time. And to top it off, he came in, debuted, and assaulted John Cena. The momentum was building. He was a heel for the first time in his career that we saw, and things were heating up for your boy. Now, not long after he split from Ziggler and AJ Lee and was back as a face, he goes for the Intercontinental Championship against Curtis Axel. And on an episode of Raw in November 2013, Big E becomes the Intercontinental Champion, the Workhorse Championship for the man who said bump work rate. And even though he said bump work rate, this man has put it in work. During his first run as champion on the main roster, he would hold the title for 167 days, defeat Curtis Axel in a rematch at Survivor Series, defeat Dolph Ziggler, his former partner, and then also defeat Damian Sando as well. Now it's crazy because during this run, Big E would just win. Win, 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 win. Except when it came to his last name, as Big E lost that. And during this time, this man got his name cut in half and Langston was gone. Now just Big E. Now just Big E and the new day. For this next entry on the list, we have one of the most dynamic, the most entertaining, most influential tag team trios of all time. We talked about obstacles and adversity in your way. 
And there's no team that exemplifies that more than the New Day, who was thrown together on a whim on their last breath, about to be fired. They were there to spread positivity. And as Eric of West Coast Pop would say, these fickle fans booed them. But nonetheless, you can't stop the power of positivity. And Big E, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods went on to Extreme Rules 2015, backs against the wall, came out swinging like Ali, and became the WWE World Tag Team Champions. They defeated Cesaro and Tyson Kidd in a glorious match as we've seen Big E dive through the ropes for his spear. We've seen the Midnight Hour. The cyborg, the Swiss Superman himself, Claudio Castanoli, Cesaro, if you will, and Tyson, the sharpshooting technical wizard kid who needs more credit, were not enough to defeat the upcoming New Day. They weren't supposed to be here. They weren't supposed to host WrestleMania, walk into WrestleMania as champions. They weren't supposed to become the longest reigning ever WWE Tag Team Champions in history. That wasn't supposed to happen. But it did. But they did it. They did it anyways. They believed in themselves. They did the improbable, the unthinkable, and they believed in the power of positivity. And because... This is a special entry because the hip swiveling, pancake throwing, championship winning trio is the longest reigning WWE Tag Team Champions in history after their SummerSlam 2015 win to become the two time WWE Tag Team Champions. And thanks to the Freebird rule, which might as well be the New Day rule at this point in time, they defeated the prime time players and this would spark their 483 day reign as champions. And you'd think it'd be a cakewalk, but no, it was not easy for your boys. Yeah, they were dripping syrup in their mouths, throwing pancakes and playing the trombone. But it was not easy for your boys as on the last day, the authority stepped in and threw gauntlet after gauntlet after them. They had to go through former champions like the Good Brothers, Cesaro and Sheamus, the bar. And finally, throughout that, they still became the longest reigning champions and shattered the record. So if there's one thing to take from this entry, it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you finish. It matters about surrounding yourself with like-minded people, people that got your back no matter what, people that want to see you succeed as much as you want to see them succeed, and that is the new day. It took a lot for them to get to this point in history. They didn't take the easy way out. They didn't take no for an answer. They stuck together and made it work. I can't even think of a time without the New Day in WWE anymore. They've been together for almost 10 years now. Shout out to the New Day, shout out to Big E for becoming two time WWE World Tag Team Champions. They're now renamed as the Raw Tag Team Champions. This is their belts. And like they say, to start your morning right, set yourself up for a good day, get your bootios. Cause when you have your bootios, And you can't be booty if you keep winning gold. The New Day going to SmackDown Live hit a generational run like no other. They became the six time WWE SmackDown Tag Team Champions and put some of the best segments, best matches, best moments in the history of pro wrestling. So let's break it down for you. Starting off with their all-time great rivalry with the Usos. The New Day defeated the Usos at Battleground to win their first SmackDown Tag Team Championships. They battled them again at SummerSlam where the Usos were victorious. And if you thought that was enough, we got the all-time rap segment, rap battle. Wale was the host and these two dug into each other. I mean, they weren't holding back. They were talking about PG and Rikishi. They were talking about Biggie's chest in a battle that wasn't about being just the best tag team, but rapping the best. How Kofi's Jamaican accent was no mo, and how Jimmy and Jay wouldn't have been there if they didn't feel the glow. We can go on and on about how great this rap battle was, and I still watch it to this day. But let's get back to the wrestling. These two would have one of the greatest Hell in a Cell matches of all time, a greatest tag team Hell in a Cell match by far. And to do this in a company where tag teams weren't getting enough credit, getting enough shine, they were on the pre-show putting on five-star classics. So we gotta give credit to one of the greatest tag team feuds of all time. It didn't matter where they were on the card. I was watching, I was glued to the screen. Whether it was the pre-show, the main pay-per-view, or YouTube TV, if it was the Usos versus the New Day, your boy was watching. If you have to watch one of the matches from this feud, 
Again, I will reiterate, watch their Hell in a Cell match. That one was an all-time great. Along with their great rivalry with Usos, they even have wins over the Bludgeon Brothers, The Revival, Daniel Bryan and Rowan, and Miz and Morrison. All love for the New Day as a group, but this is the Big E Champion Series, and Big E himself had won the Tag Team Gold by himself in a triple threat match, literally putting the team on his back. Big E out here winning chips and hitting splits. I mean, the dude could do a full split. He can literally do it all. At this point in time, Big E and the New Day were everywhere. They were taking over. They were bigger than wrestling, bigger than the booking, bigger than weekly TV itself. I'm talking up, up, down, down in the YouTube gaming community. I'm talking Big E walking champions to the ring at boxing events, telling boxing fans don't be sour. I'm talking about their podcast that came up, Big Meaty Men Slapping Meat. I'm talking commercials. I'm talking about being characters in video games like Gears of War and Fall Guys. The New Day took over, not just wrestling, but they're everywhere. It can't be said enough how bigger than wrestling they were to a generation of people inspiring millions. These guys are first ballot Hall of Famers, no question. Clap it up for your boys. Next up on the list, we have Big E separated from the pack, separated from his boys because of that stupid WWE draft that split the New Day. Now in singles competition with a new theme by Wale, Big E is on his own on SmackDown. And although we believe in Big E to go on a run by himself, it hurt that the team that was bigger than wrestling was now split up. So how do you keep the positivity, E? How do you reinvent yourself at this stage in the game? I've been an entertainer, a tag partner, and a friend. But now I finally get to answer the question of what could have been. What could have been if they just passed him the ball? What could have been if they let him run it alone? And with the cosigns of Kofi and Woods, when they passed him the ball, he took off and ran it like Barry to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone, touchdown, as he defeated Sami Zayn in a lumberjack match to become the two-time Intercontinental Champion. And if you do it once, like I always say, you gotta do it twice. Now, for this next entry on the list, after walking into WrestleMania as the Intercontinental Champion for his first singles match that headlined the dance, Big E proved himself as a single star and was now ready to win the Money in the Bank ladder match at the pay-per-view in 2021. It had been a long time since WWE hit a home run with the winner of the Men's Money in the Bank briefcase, but with Big E, they didn't just hit a home run, they hit a grand slam of positivity, and this was a huge moment as Big E became the first black wrestler to win the briefcase, which in itself is not only shocking because of how many times the Money in the Bank briefcase has been on the line, because when you think about the Money in the Bank briefcase, you think about none other than Shelton Benjamin who stole the show every single time he was in the match. But that's another story for another video and another time. But in this time, in this video, it is all about the big man, Big E, who hit the big ending off a ladder on Seth Rollins, the man who we took the NXT Championship from, the man who we took the FCW Tag Team Championship from. Now, after the big splat on Seth Rollins, Big E and the big ending climbed the ladder to get the biggest opportunity of his career, and he grabbed the briefcase. Not only did he grab the briefcase, but for this next entry in the list, he grabbed the big one. He did it. In September 2021, the biggest of years for the biggest of ease, he grabbed the WWE Championship from my guy, Bobby Lashley. But this is not the Bobby Lashley video, this is the Big E video. And all night long on that episode of Raw, Big E called his shot from the beginning to the big ending, if you will. He said he was cashing in tonight. Through the commercial breaks, through the backstage segments, he was looming. He was saying, I'm cashing in. And during the Bobby Lashley title defense against Randy Orton, after the match, Biggie came out and he made true of his word. This is the first time in history where the title exchanged from one black champion to the other. Big E was finally a triple crown winner in WWE, and even though they were split up, he celebrated with his New Day brothers and became the second New Day member to hold the WWE Championship. I mean, we got New Day holding tag team championships, WWE championships, the king of the ring. What can't this group do? What can't Big E do? So with all the power positivity, with all the fan support, if there's one person that can come back from a neck injury stronger than ever, it is Biggie. This is his first WWE Championship win. I know he's out with injury right now, but this will not be his last championship win. We know 
Big E is on his way back. So what we can do now is keep giving our best wishes to the man and hoping he has a full recovery from his neck injury. Because first of all, we want to see Big E as healthy as possible, as happy as possible, because that's what comes first. And if he's ready, because we want to see Big E back in WWE. We want to see Big E and the New Day back together. We want to see Big E headline and main event wrestle media against his dream opponent. You know, you guessed it. Goldberg! That's right. If you can dream it, it can happen. Goldberg versus Big E. work rate and how guys are on the ring and moonsault. I don't care about any of that. You heard? Y'all want a great match? Nah. Bump that. I want to see two big men with big <laughs> with big chests. <laughs> and big muscles. Bumming me. <laughs> That's why I'm here. That's why I watch wrestling as a kid. You on your five star matches. <laughs> You want your 30 minute classics? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Big meaty man slapping me. <laughs> I'm ripping up. <laughs> and with that being said, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe. There's more Champions videos in the way. But this has been your Big Meaty Men Slapping Meat edition of the Champion Series featuring Biggie. Peace out, y'all.